Hello everybody and welcome back to this video. Alright, so today we are going to be talking a little bit about Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. Funny thing is, we're not actually going to be talking about Leaves of Grass at all in this. Because what we're going to be talking about is... I started reading this um, the, the day it showed up. And um, I'm, what, like 25 pages into it. Because you need to kind of meditate on a lot of the stuff that comes out of here. And some of it I do not... I do not vibe with as the yoga instructors like to say. So, um, I, I have some questions that we will be talking about, um, at a later time, but what I want to talk about, um, is the introduction to this, the introductory note. Um, it is, uh, an essay of sorts called Walt Whitman by, a chap named Bliss Perry. Um, and to give you a little information about this, the introductory note is excerpted from the American Spirit and Literature, a chronicle of great interpreters by Bliss Perry, first published in 1918. Okay? So this is coming again from 1918 now i want to read the is this just one long sentence it sure fucking is good old bliss knows a run-on sentence when he sees one so i'm going to read this to you walt whitman had a passion for his native soil he was hypnotized by the word america he spent much of his mature life in brooding over the question, what, after all, is an American? And what should an American poet be in our age of science and democracy? Okay, just so you know, that was fucking written in the 18 fucking hundreds, okay? Are we familiar now? Do we do we get this? <sighs> what, after all, is an American? And what should an American poet be in our age of science and democracy? Well, Walt, that is a fucking question and a half. And it's one that we're going to take care of today. We're, we're going to dissect this shit. Another thing that's interesting is that Mr. Whitman here, he was a poet. He wrote longer stuff. He wrote essays. He wrote letters. He was a writer, okay? And he was writing during the American Civil War. He spent some time on the front lines of the American Civil War as a um, doing like nursing shit. Listen to me. Like, I'm a writer. I know words. And he was in love with his country. He was on the side of the North. And maybe, just maybe, the reason why he is the way he is is because he was on the right side of history. Maybe not, but maybe. And talking about what should, a, what should an American poet be in our age of science and democracy made me really think. Because for a lot of you, and I think on both sides of the fence whatever political affiliation you have, I think this transcends that and we will we'll all be able to agree on this question or the statement that we are probably closer than we've ever been to the 
unrest of the time right before the Civil War and probably, like, during. And it makes you think of, okay, so what should an American poet be during this time? Science has grown leaps and bounds since the mid-1800s. Huh. Democracy, though, really hasn't seemed to change much at all. It seemed like it was changing and moving towards something. And then in just the last, I don't know, year, two years, everything seems to be going backwards in time. And for those of you who would like to argue that with me, like the people on the Supreme Court right now have said that they want things to be like they were. So let's just agree here. Um, I'm not saying anything that's wacky right now. So what should an American poet be? Is it our job to talk about the things that are happening right now in our country it's weird because I really don't feel the love for my native soil that I once did I am very disillusioned by America right now um, I am very much I don't know when you guys watch the news or when you guys get up to date on current events, do you ever feel better? Like, I haven't felt good hearing about current events in fucking who knows how long. And um, I think pretty much everybody... <laughs> whether you are a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, or whatever, um, I think we could all agree that um, the job Biden's doing, um, we're not very happy with that. So, um, you know, they say you can't, you can't please everybody, but fuck, it would be nice if you could at least please some people, for fuck's sake. Jesus Christ. Okay, so what is our job? As writers, like, are we supposed to be um, chronicling these things? Are we supposed to be um, sharing our thoughts and emotions on these things? I know we shouldn't be confrontational and argumentative when we bring these things up. We should be able to continue a conversation. We should be able to engage in discourse. You know, these are the things we should be able to do, but can we even do that right now? What do you guys think? What is the job of the American poet? And I know a lot of you who watch this channel aren't from America, but I think you could understand um, what I mean when I say shit's getting fucked and I don't know what my job is as a creator. What is my job right now? Like if you um, live in Europe, especially Eastern Europe right now, shit is fucked. Like, how do you feel about it? What is your job right now? If you're in um, the UK, things have been moving there. What is your job as a creator, as a writer? What is our job? Do we owe society anything? Do we owe them anything to with our work? Do we owe our neighborhoods, our states, our country? Do we owe our country anything with our writing? What are the answers to these questions? I don't know. I know that every time I want to talk about things like this. I know whenever I want to write about things like this, inevitably what ends up happening 
somebody gets mad at what I write, they send me a fucking email or they leave a comment and they start fucking telling me off. We are all fucking civilized fucking human beings. We should be able to have a fucking conversation. And it shouldn't be something where, like, I write something that somebody doesn't like. They tell me off, and as soon as they're done telling me off, they block me. That's not a conversation. That's you wanting to get the last word any way you can. The whole point of this is, is that what is our... What, what is our responsibility? Every time I try to take that step, I end up getting hate back. And I don't want to deal with people's shit. You can criticize my work all you want. And the best way to criticize my work, if you don't like it, don't buy it and move on. Don't give me your money and move on. That's great. If you don't like something I am saying, you can tell me that you don't like something I'm saying or that you don't agree with something I'm saying. We don't need violence. We don't need threats. We don't need any of this shit. But when people come at me, when I'm trying to share like my feelings and how I'm seeing the world and for people to fucking like attack me verbally for this shit and like... I don't know. It's just, it's so fucking crazy. Why can't we just fucking communicate? I don't understand. There are a lot of people who don't read my work anymore, who I really thought near and dear to my heart as friends. And because we do not agree politically or religiously, um, like we, we don't talk at all anymore. And that's sad. That is not how society is supposed to work. So, I will ask you the question again. What is your responsibility as an American poet in this age of science and democracy? See you later.